Oh boy, here we go again. Another review of an EcoFlow product. What do we have today? Today we've got the EcoFlow Delta 2 Max, which is they figured out whatever it is that would kill us, but then they knocked it back a little bit. So this is a power station for those that might not know. I don't know the exact specs right now. Specs? <clears throat> I don't know the exact specs right now. It's a big boy. Actually, you know what? There's something on the top. Hang on. Portable power station. Capacity is 2,048 watt hours. And then you got a whole bunch of other stuff here. Charges real fast. I know that much. I plugged it into my inverter last night and it almost killed my house because it's pulling two kilowatts of power. But the cool thing is, is there's a little switch. You can switch it when you're plugged into a wall and slow charge in case you know, you're worried about frying your house. I live in a van if you don't know. It's a 15 amp pure sine wave 2400 watts that it can do at max so that's pretty good that means it can run my cure egg without problem now i've gone and talked about a few of these different power stations before in the past uh delta flow obviously they sent me my air conditioner so i'm excited to hook that air conditioner up to this bad boy and see how much more longevity i could get out of the air conditioner or heater if it's a nippy evening but i can't do diddly squat with this thing right now because it's not charged if i turn it on on the front here it will tell us that's at, well, it's at 20%. What I'm more curious to do, because it comes with your standard, plug it into the wall to charge it, or plug it into your cigarette lighter in your car to charge it. And it can also, like every other power station, it can attach to solar panels. But I've never had solar panels like this before. These are those fancy, like, hey, go hoof them into the bush on a picnic and bring them with you. I don't know that I'd do that, because these are clearly expensive, because they're very heavy. But I've never charged any of these power stations with these panels before. So we're going to try that in the sun that we have. It's it's pretty clear. We'll put it out there on the, on the boulevard and, and see how she do. So let's do that. These panels, whoa, that's a hole in the ground. Don't step in it. Panels come in a very nice carrying case and they do fold up quite compactly. This will fit very nicely right at the back of Lucky where my catio goes and it won't take up a lot of space. I've never hooked these up before. Let's learn together. Can't possibly be that difficult. Ooh. Okay. Whoop. Hey, get out of here, cardboard. Go recycle yourself. Say, okay, so it's negative and positive. That's nice that they're labeled. Then what do I do? I just, Ooh. wow. There's solar panels on both sides. How does this work? Is there any instructions with the solar panels? Hang on, I'll be right back. Face this side toward the sun. Perfect. So this side towards the sun, no bueno. No, this is nice with the panels popped up like that. I can put the power station right in the shade. Don't have to worry about frying it or anything. Not that it's that hot today, but all right. So if you don't know, red is positive, black is negative universally, unless you're in a house where white comes into play and it's a whole bunch of nonsense. Well, unless of course your solar panel wires, then you're both black, but at least they labeled them for me. So that's nice. I hope these stickers don't come off. Or you could also tell because they won't mate properly. <laughs> there's only one way. Okay. Then there's all the good stuff. Here we go. It's not light, but she's powerful AF. PV1. Do it. Let's watch on the screen and see what the sun does for us. Okay, 155 watts coming in from the sun. I mean, I don't know how much better I can make that. I guess I could try laying it back a bit. What if I like, but I mean, that's pretty good sun coverage. So I don't know. Is that better? <laughs> hey, it is. 192 and as we can see right here on this very fancy display look at it go uh, 11 hours it's going to take to charge only on sun one thing i do know that this unit does is if i were so inclined i could also now plug it into an, a wall outlet i guess if i was outside or something or if i had the solar panel cables running inside i could also plug it into a wall outlet and, and super fast charge it and it's done like that this thing goes from zero to 80% in about 45 minutes and then up to 100% within the hour or something like that. It is pretty cool technology that way. But yeah, we're gonna let that sit there, charge as much as we can whilst we sit around and do what we do best. Yeah, I'm gonna do a live stream tonight and maybe we will power up everything I need off of the Delta II Max and see how she does. I'm thinking she's gonna do just fine, but it's gonna be based on how much charge I can get.
Eh, don't mind me, I'm just out here powering my life. I mean, it's a, it's a little weird. I know lots of people do it. I have never seen anybody do this with these portable panels, not in real life, just on the YouTubes, which is what you're all watching me do right now. But eh, I don't give a hoot. We did discover that it comes with an adjustable kickstand, but that is actually just the bag that it comes in, which is kind of cool that you don't have another thing to worry about because the bag itself is very rigid. Um, let me see. Yeah, see, nice and rigid, doesn't even fall over. And it's got this like rubberized grip on the outside that holds onto the panel quite well. I don't know that I would actually call it an adjustable kickstand, but hey, it holds the panels up and that's exactly what I needed, so. What about you guys? Enjoying the outdoor time? Yeah? Yeah? Maybe we should get you guys little hamster style wheels and you could run and create power to charge up the power station. So it's been about an hour and a half or so and we have gone up about 10%. We are at, oh, 31. So 11%. And we are a solid, where is it? 200 watts. That's pretty good. These are 220 watt panels. That seems pretty efficient to me. Lucky's got 300 watts of solar on her roof. I don't think I've ever seen the draw come anywhere near that. So, I mean, you get what you pay for, for sure, with these solar panels. Um, and now, I'm gonna tear this down. This is something I would absolutely set up at a campground or something for like a weekend or a long weekend or whatever, and just charge up the power for the evening sort of festivities, run the projector outside, play your movies, your video games, or whatever else you might need to do overnight with it, um, and then have this out all, all day. And these things are, what is that, IP68 or whatever? So they're waterproof, which is really cool. And now let's see how long it takes me to put them away. Super simple disconnect. Right. So you could total this cable's nice and long, the one that actually goes to the unit. That's a lot of cable to run. You could totally run that through a hole. You could skip. You could skip. Probably. Woo. Okay. Up. Hey. Well, say this, it's easier to put away to my catio. So, oh, haha, which I now have to do. Mm. Had some clouds rolled in, so I figured it was a good time to stop trying to charge with solar panels anyway. So now we will take a peek at uh, the unit a little bit closer up. Maybe not necessarily right now, because I got to go do a garbage run and it's hot and live stream and all this stuff. We'll catch some people's kids. All right, so I'm just getting set up for my live stream here, and we are going to use that 30%. Uh, to charge the computer. The computer is almost dead, so I need it plugged in anyway. So let's, okay, let's turn this bad boy on. All right, so I got uh, my computer cable here, plug it into the USB-C port, press that button to turn it on. There we go. Oh yes, right, 31%. I reached out to EcoFlow and asked them about this red symbol. We'll get into that later. It's a little screwdriver and a wrench. Turn this on. Boom. Ooh, there we go. Pretty quick updates too. For how long you, uh, how long it'll take to drain, right? So we're drawing about what, 56, 50, we'll say 50 watts, 55 watts, 10 hours. That's, I am not doing a 10 hour live stream tonight. I guarantee you that. All right, so live stream is done. Just wrapped it up over here, that's awesome. And this thing basically charged my entire computer. Let's see what we're at here. Well, it went down 3% and now it's done charging. So I mean, that's to be expected. It's not like the MacBook Pro, which yes, Yukon Sunshine is far superior, is a huge power draw, but the capacity on that thing is easy. I didn't have to even think about it. It just did it, which at the end of the day, at least when it comes to charging a, a computer, what more could you ask for? Water for you. Good girl. Yeah, you can have some too. Okay, so 
I am at my cousin's right now. We're gonna have a barbecue, so that means I have some shore power available to me. So I've got the shore power line plugged in. We're gonna attach it right in here to this fancy little connector. Bada bing, bada boom. And this is the little, hang on, let me turn my flashlight on. Yeah, that's a little bit better. So that little switch right here, does it say, yeah, it says it up here on the, on the low, on the panel. Fast charging to the left, slow charging to the right. So, let me see how easy this is gonna be if I, not very easy, hang on. Please, a little bike. There we go. So right now, we're pulling 350, 360 watts, it looks like on slow charge. Let's see if you see if you can see that. All right, so now it's kind of stabilized. We've got 385 watts charging the unit right now. You can see that it's gonna take four hours to charge it. I'm gonna reach back here and I'm gonna flip that switch to fast charge. See what happens. Immediately starts climbing. We'll wait for it to level out here. Look at it go. All right, so there we go. So we're gonna say basically 1400 watts. Oh, there it is, it's over 14, wow. But we can see that we've dropped down to one hour and we're at 28%. So I am gonna start a timer for one hour and then we'll come back and check on it. So, uh, hey Siri, set a timer for one hour. You're welcome. Oops, okay, hang on. That uh, So that tripped my breaker in my shoreline here because I also have the AC running and it's charging the AC's battery. So this might not work. This, it, it might trip it again. This is a lot of wattage as far as I understand it. So we're at 1407, 1408. There, yeah, I just tripped it again. Oh, okay. So we won't be able to do that, but I'm inclined to believe it. Let's just put it on slow charge because I'm going to be here for a while. So we're going to switch that switch back. We're going to reset Hopefully we're gonna reset it. Wonder if I blew the housebreaker. Oh good, yes, I think I've blown the housebreaker. Eh. Well, I'm gonna fix that. Awkward. The advancements in technology are great, but you've gotta have the infrastructure to, to support it. Yep, I totally blew the breaker in my cousin's house. So I just switched that back. Everything is good to go here. I just have it switched back to the slow charge. Four hours, which I have time for right now. Not so bad, that's a little bit more reasonable. But it's nice to know I have that feature if I need it. I'm assuming I got a campground, that probably wouldn't be an issue on those posts. No, it totally depends on the campground, that's for sure. All right, let's charge this sucker up. All right, so charged right up, no problem, obviously, as I expected it would. I'm gonna still wanna try it when it's the only thing on that really fast charge. And I might do that tomorrow. So what's the best way to drain this thing? I'm gonna pair it up with its, uh, with its compatriot here, the Wave 2, because it's, almost eight o'clock at night in Calgary right now, and it's still 24 degrees Celsius, which is this in Fahrenheit. So it's a little hot in the van. So we're gonna plug in, we're gonna take the, um, hmm, I think I'll take the battery off the Wave 2 so we don't have any, any interference or anything like that. And yeah, we're gonna plug in to the Delta 2 Max right over here, so where I have it situated right now. No, you do not have to put buns on the top of yours, but I choose to. All right, we're gonna power this guy on down here. Ding, da, da, ding. So 93% is what it is at. So after it charged up to 100%, that charged my cell phone all night from about 20% up to 100. That took it down about 97. And then I used it to actually play some Nintendo Switch on my TV. So it was powering all of that earlier this morning and we dropped us down to 93%. So obviously I didn't play for very long, but still performing very well in that regard. One thing I will point out though, like most of these solar stations, you have to turn on the individual zones, right? So here, if you wanna use any of these USB ports, you have to turn the zone on, right? No problem there. And then in this case, what we're gonna do, and we're gonna turn on the AC side. Boom, there we go. And you can see I got an extension cord plugged in here, which is running right over here, which is what we will plug the Wave 2 into. One thing I do have to point out is that those zones will not turn themselves off once the devices that are connected to them no longer require a charge. I've seen that feature on other units. That doesn't seem to be the case with the Delta Max 2 Pro. What the hell is this thing called? EcoFlow Delta Max 2. Delta 2 Max. Wow. That doesn't seem to be the case, so keep that in mind. I, I imagine the phantom draw that exists probably isn't that crazy, but hey, something that I feel should be pointed out just if that's something that you uh, care about. Plug in this air conditioner, it's getting hot in here, and not just because I've been yapping so much. 
Shush. All right, I'm surrounded by all of this space age technology. It's great. Let's plug this into the wave. We're gonna plug this into our power in a Delta II Max over here. Now I'm gonna have to connect this up to my uh, completely jerry-rigged way of exhausting this. I have discovered that with the wave too, it works much better if you actually exhaust the hot air. Shocking, I know. Turn this bad boy on. All right, so as you can see, it is drawing around 250 watts or so, and that will give us seven hours of air conditioning, which is amazing. So the whole point is that this guy is handling it just fine. And in this case, this very hot and sweaty, sticky, stinky van dweller greatly appreciates it. Oh. All right, and it's the next morning. I am actually thoroughly impressed with this whole combination of items between the Wave 2 and, of course, the Delta II Max. Is that right? Did I say it right? I don't know why I'm struggling with that name so much. That's a me thing. I'll work on it. This big ass unit will run the Wave 2 on like max, max, max for a, what did it like two, three, maybe four hours if it's like tippy, tippy topped and charged up. And that's amazing because that's like 16 degrees Celsius, full fan, and it cools. It'll, it'll make you chilly. Like you'll want to put on clothes, which like some people, it's just not ideal. Right? But what I happily discovered when I turned the Wave 2 to eco mode, which is exactly what you think it is. It's more of an economically friendly way of power consuming and whatnot. Now, of course, you're not going to get that freeze your, your nippies off cooling and the fan's going to be running lower. But living in a small space like this, it was it was really good. It was still chugging away. I'm like, I'm nice and comfortable. Let's go over here and see how this thing is doing. And on the screen, it had switched to saying it will do that for almost 40 hours. And I wasn't even at 100% charge. And that is really cool, especially for someone who runs as bloody hot as I do. Now, I know that's more of a mm, for the Wave 2 and whatnot, but the Wave 2 has its own little portable battery and that's great if you're hoofing it out into the bush and whatnot. You pair it with their big old power station here. I actually finally saw the huge benefit of having both of these units for this lifestyle. Now, obviously it might not, it might be a little cramped for me, but man, when it is the peak of summer and it is disgusting outside, that's a pretty cool companionship. So now what I'm going to do is I didn't quite get this all the way down to dead. We're down to 39% though. And I was gonna go over to my cousins and shore power and charge this up, but I'm gonna use my inverter in Lucky instead. Right now, my house batteries are at 85% and we're already starting to pull a solar charge, which is awesome. I completely expect that to drain my house batteries because as we learned, it's closer to like 1500 watts amps. Yikes, could you imagine? 1500 watts when it's fast charging. But if it only lasts for an hour, maybe that means I could top this up and then we have the rest of the day to recharge my house batteries. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna get out the cable. We're gonna plug it into the inverter and, and kick off the festivities. All right, so I got her plugged in. She's plugged into my inverter back here, and I'm just gonna flip the inverter on and we will get a nice charge going here. I will have to be careful because it gets very close to 2,000 watts, and that is only a 2,000 watt inverter. When you're doing stuff like this, you gotta make sure you got the right gauge cable on your inverter. I'm pretty good. This is pretty decent gauge. We sh it shouldn't be a problem, but to stay on the safe side, I'm going to unplug the charger for my other power station, which is right there. So we only want to be charging the EcoFlow. So let's flip her on. Oh wait, she's gonna be on slow charge though, isn't she? There we go, okay. But let's, there's that switch. There we go, fast charge. Okay, and we'll keep an eye on this and we'll see how it goes. Look at that, I already got 1% back. That's amazing. Now. Come back here, we can see, yeah, so a thousand watts so far. You hear it kicking on. Little fans are spinning up. Oof, right up to two, eh? Which is interesting that that's what that, I don't know that I trust that battery monitor of mine because the EcoFlow straight is just saying 16. 55 minutes! Well, now it says 56 minutes, but still. Hmm. All right. Well, we're going to start a timer and see just how accurate this really is. And in the worst case scenario, um, if I notice my house battery is dropping too much, I'll start my van and use my DC to DC charger to give a little bit back. It's not going to give anywhere near 1600 watts back, but at least it will slow down 
the drain on the house battery. Science, they think. Darn it. Okay, so 20 minutes of charging time. It went from whatever it was at, what was it 39 or something to 30? Whatever it was, it got up to 57% charge, but that was a huge drain on the system and something tripped. I don't know what it was. The EcoFlow itself started clicking like it was turning on and off, like it was trying to protect itself. So I have a sneaking suspicion it was my end of this system. So I'm going to do one more test because here's the thing is I only have a 200 amp hour LifePo 4 battery. And at 20 minutes, I went down to 64% on that battery. I'm thinking if I had double or triple the capacity, it might not have been an issue. More power, as they say. So now I've got it on slow charge. So we're doing 380 watts, three hours, and it's ticking, ticking, ticking away, and all systems are go. Um, I had my lights off to reduce that draw. Didn't seem to make a difference. EcoFlow itself kept ticking, ticking, ticking. Even when I switched over to slow charge, what I had to do was turn the unit off with the power button on the front. I left it for like 10, 15 seconds. And then I didn't even turn it on. I just plugged it back in, turned my inverter back on, and it's working fine in terms of like it's charging. So that was interesting. So I'm gonna have to do one more test and I'm going to plug it in to an actual house outlet on fast charge because I gotta know that that feature actually works, right? So that'll probably be in the next clip, which could be a couple days from now because like I said, I'm just gonna try and charge this up so I can cool my house down later. All right, third time is hopefully the charm. This video is all over the place. I'm now at my parents' house again out in BC, and I've got Lucky attached with a shoreline. So we've got power running in from their house to the power bar. As you can see, there's nothing else plugged in here. So we're going to plug in the Delta II Max, as we can also see over here, completely 100% gonzo. And we're gonna turn it on to fast charge, which again, for those in the cheap seats, is on the other side, and I'm hoping to be finally wowed and prove to myself that it's just the janky systems I was using before. And by janky, I mean my 200 amp hour battery setup with a 2000 watt inverter and Lucky, and then my cousin's house um, when I was also running the Wave 2. Huge power draw is not ideal. Let's plug this bad boy in, see what happens. We're not going to sit here for an hour and watch. We're just going to make sure this starts. There we go, and we're off. Oh yeah, the little red wrench screwdriver thing. Hang on, I'm gonna check my messages. Apparently that little red symbol indicates beta version for KOL testing. I don't know what that means, but that is what EcoFlow told me when I reached out to them with a photo showing them the screen with that little red icon. So I'm assuming it's just in the version that they sent me and it shouldn't be in when did you buy. That's all of the information I have regarding that situation. We are now only at 500 Watts. What is happening? That's a far cry from 14, honey. Maybe it's because it was dead dead. Because it still only says one hour. All right, I'm gonna set myself a timer for 20 minutes and we'll leave this like this and see what happens. I'm gonna come right back. All right, in 20 minutes, let's see what this thing is doing. Well, it's making noise when my other phone is going off. That's great. There we go. Okay, hang on. Where's this other phone making noise? All right, that's good. So after 20 minutes, we're up to 23%. I bet you what was happening there, where's the lights? Is when it's completely dead like it was, it's gotta do a slow trickle charge to sort of get it going. The very limited stuff that I understand about batteries, that makes sense to me. And now we are just, uh, we're rocking and rolling 1600 watts. That's crazy. So I will actually check it after an hour and she should be tippy, tippy, tippy top. There might've been one too many tippies but it's cool to see this feature working. All right, it's been one hour. It's saying 12 minutes left and it's at 94%. That's actually pretty cool. And that's a pretty impressive feature. So as long as you have the right power source, that's, uh, that's gonna be extremely beneficial. Okay, we're gonna wrap this video up by going over a few highlights about this behemoth of a product in the final clip. All right, let's finish this video up with some very specific key features of the EcoFlow Delta 2 Max. I'm getting better. Because in the vast sea of these solar generators, there's a lot. So why choose this one? Well, this, uh, they gave me some reasons as to why, and we'll see if I agree with them wholeheartedly or not. Right off the top, obviously, we all know this. There's no gas involved in this. They say it is a clean, quiet, 2400 watt replacement for gas generators. I actually do agree with that. 
with the way I live my van life. I'm usually in areas where I don't want to be making a lot of obnoxious noise when I'm trying to power my stuff. If I only had a gas generator, that would be loud. That would be obnoxious. It'd probably bug me before it bugged anybody else as well. So that is why I've always taken to these solar generators. There's no noise and harnessing the power of the sun. These are the key things we need to focus on when we're talking about solar generators like this. It has no fumes, no noise, no maintenance. Powers up to 99% of home appliances. I don't have anywhere near that amount of home appliances. I have a toaster that it runs really darn good. And an air conditioner. And that was the most impressive part, that it would run that for a very lengthy period of time. Fume-free, obviously, unless you spill something on it that really stinks. The unit's not going to, you know, bother your nose. It's quiet. Yes, it says it has only 30 decibels of noise. Now, that's going to be when you have, like, all of your AC plugins maybe working, and then the fans got to kick on and keep this thing cool. I didn't hear it once with any of my testing, although the air conditioner makes noise. So I go, moving right along. There's zero maintenance, unlike gas generators. There's no fuel to refill, filters to clean, or moving parts to break. Again, I don't have a lot of experience with gas generators. The limited experience that I do have with them, yeah, you got to worry about oil and, and filling it up and all this other thing that's got to be serviced just like any other engine. I don't have time for that. Do you? And then I touched on this briefly at the beginning of this video. It is a 2400 watt solar generator and it can surge up to double that, which is if you're not quick with math is 4,800 watts. And that's pretty cool. That's if your device for whatever reason de demands that boom burst of 4,800 watts. What the hell are you using? But if it does demand that, this thing's got you covered. That's pretty darn cool. Yeah, we played around with this a lot in this video. The world's fastest recharging speed, AC, AC plus solar, dual charge, zero to 80% in only 43 minutes, four times faster than the industry standard. Yes, it's wordy. Of course, it's going to be wordy. They got to get the point across. I was thoroughly impressed with that fast charging capability. Now, that's going to come in super handy for someone like me when I'm at a campground with power, but maybe I can't hook up to it because my cousin's using it at the same time, right? So I could power my, all my stuff off this when it drains, I then take an hour out of our day and charge it back up. That's pretty cool versus four to five to six hours, depending on how much you've depleted it on that slow charge setting. That's probably one of the coolest features on this unit. You can decide the fact that it can run the air conditioner. That's what my favorite feature of this thing is, is that fast charge function. Like I mentioned, you got to have the infrastructure set up. They also say that it's the lightest 2400 watt life po for battery. Long lifespan of 10 years, and it's 16.3 pounds lighter than anything else in the in the division, the weight class. <clears throat> now, of course, that's saying something. That means I've never used anything that has this big of a capacity. But if they're saying that this is the lightest, I would not want anything else. Because this itself, it's, it's hefty. It's not going to move around. That actually came in handy when I moved it into its position on the counter there. Its weight, coupled with the rubber feet that it's got on the bottom... <laughs> I don't have to strap it down. I'm not, I don't take a lot of corners very sharply, but I do do a lot of driving through twisty mountain roads and not once did I have any concern that this was gonna come flying off. So sure, it's light, but it's heavy enough. Confidence, peace of mind that your investment's not gonna fall over and flatten your cat. And that's one thing that's really cool. I couldn't talk about it too much, but it's why I have the unit facing this way is that it's expandable places for batteries two of them so you got extra battery port one extra battery port two i don't have extra batteries you can purchase them separately from this unit and we'll essentially turn this into a six thousand watt hour battery bank now that's not going to be very beneficial for like a nomadic situation unless you've got a little rv or something but for a home if you're using it as a backup solution should the grid go down or anything like that six thousand watt hours is pretty damn impressive and I don't think you're going to be lacking for any power if that is something that you want to invest into. Pretty cool that this little guy, this little guy can expand that way. Yeah, it's also got the customized in-app energy management. Take control of your power. Who wrote this? But it's true. This and the Wave 2 flawlessly work with the EcoFlow app. I downloaded it. It was very intuitive. I even You can even just rename what they are. Like this is Lucky's Delta 2 Max and that is Lucky's Wave 2. Like just, you know, so like easy to identify. And it's very easy to go in and see all of the different settings and what you can change. More so on the Wave 2, obviously. But the fact that you can see what the battery level is at without having to, you know, get out of bed if you're one of the extra lazy people or it's just like Sunday for me. That's really cool. And I, I'm always hesitant when stuff is like, oh, download the app and you can use it to control for me, it's mostly my cameras and stuff. All that stuff's usually hot garbage. With the EcoFlow app, they, you can clearly tell that they spent some time on it and it works very well 
speaks to the devices, no problem. I think it's definitely worth it. It is a beast of a unit. I definitely feel like you are getting your money's worth with this specific unit. Now you just gotta ask yourself, do I need this much power? And I know a lot of us out there, the longer we're in this lifestyle, the more we tend to add stuff to the lifestyle that requires power. And um, this thing will handle all of that, no problem. And like I said, she's definitely a beast when it comes to off-grid living. Sorry to interrupt the end of this video, everybody, but I got an updated discount code from EcoFlow. So if you are interested in picking up one of these awesome units, click the link in the description below to use the discount code EFVANLP5 to score yourself an additional 5% off on the Delta 2 Max and all of the Delta 2 Max solar generator bundles. That'll be valid until June 25th. And if you purchase before June 11th, they'll throw in a waterproof bag for free. Dicky bye bye. Obviously, I'll get a little bit of a kickback if you use my specific link. But again, as I've mentioned before, I'm just looking to offer up discounts on this stuff because nothing is cheap anymore in this world. And if it is cheap, it's probably not going to last. There's a whole bunch of information down there in the description. Take a look at it if you are seriously considering something like this. And like I said, these brand new products from EcoFlow, they're onto something here. And I think they're definitely worth it if you can afford it. So until the next one, you guys, just go out there, be happy, be creative, be yourself. Most importantly, be positive, and I'll see you all in the next one.